Ave Maria, welcome to Pro-Life to the Max, a weekly half-hour radio program under the patronage of St. Maximilian Mary Colby that is dedicated to keeping you informed on local, state, and national pro-life issues and efforts and inspiring you to get involved. I'm Monica Siefker, and in preparation for the holy season of Advent, I'm going to be interviewing Bernadette Conklin from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area about her pre-born Jesus ministry. Bernadette and her apostolate have been featured on EWTN, in the National Catholic Register, and in Our Sunday Visitor. Bernadette has also done a host of speaking engagements at Catholic conferences, Legatus meetings, and Magnificat prayer breakfasts. But before we bring Bernadette on, let's begin in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you took on our human nature upon yourself. You shared our life and death, our childhood and adulthood. You also shared our time in the womb. While still God, while worshipped and adored by the angels, while almighty and filling every part of the universe, you dwelt for nine months in the womb of Mary. You were our Redeemer in the womb, our God who was a preborn child. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless and protect the children who today are in their mother's wombs. Save them from the danger of abortion. Give their mothers the grace to sacrifice themselves in body and soul for their children. Help all people to recognize in the preborn child a brother, a sister, saved by you, a Redeemer in the womb. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay, as a mother, I'm quite aware of that special and intimate time that takes place between a mother and her unborn child for those nine months when the baby is growing and developing within the womb. And I'm sure all the mothers out there that you can attest to that as well. But to be honest, most of us have probably never really given a whole lot of thought or meditation upon the fact that our Savior spent nine months in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, our guest for today's show is going to help change that. Let's welcome Bernadette Conklin onto the show. Hi, Bernadette. Hello. I wish all your viewers a happy Advent season. Thank you, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Now, Bernadette, we wanted to do this interview with you right at the start of Advent, which for us Catholics is a time of spiritual preparation for the celebration of the birth of our Savior. And I don't know if you know this, but there's a mystic, Louisa Picarita, and during Advent, she would make a novena to honor the nine months that Jesus desired to be in the womb of Mary. And she did what I'll call a type of Ignatian contemplation, whereby she would get into the womb of Mary with the preborn Jesus and immerse herself in his life there, listening to those sweet colloquies between the divine child and his mother. So I'm sure what you have to say to us today is, is going to do something very similar for us. Uh, but before we get much further, Bernadette, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, just some general background information, then we'll get into the details of your story and your ministry. Okay, well, I am proudly Catholic and was blessed to be raised um, as a Catholic, and um, I'm from Wheeling, West Virginia originally, and went through all the way 12 years of Catholic education and formation, and then I married my sweetheart from college, Scott, and we were blessed um, We have four children, and I am also a grandmother, and my oldest, well, we have four sons, and my oldest um, has a a lovely wife and um, two children, Emma and John, and I also uh, wanted to mention that he was a twin, so I did miscarry at seven weeks, so Melissa is, um, God revealed her to me, and she's a big part of this ministry, and so um, I'll share a little bit about that later with amazing, astounding research that unveils the mother-child bond. Okay, great, great, yeah. Well, Bernadette, you know what? A a lot of us at some point in our lives have been what I'll call pew potatoes. We go to Sunday Mass, sit in the pew for an hour, and then leave and and live our lives as if our faith wasn't really all that important to us. So um, can you briefly describe your faith journey and and how it helped to shape your ministry? Surely. I um, was blessed, as I said, to be formed well. Um, However, in my college days after um, high school, I um, started to question some things, and I practiced my faith, but more like uh, you've heard the term cafeteria Catholic. So Mm -hmm. 
Um, I was blessed to have a conversion through Divine Mercy over 25 years ago, and it actually happened at 3 o'clock hour um, wow. on Good Friday. So wow. I am so thankful <laughs> to God for His mercy that He shed upon me, and it led to um, my husband's conversion into the Catholic faith, and wow. uh, then the beauty of the ministry unfolding in 2009. So when you um, married, he was not Catholic. Is that correct then? Correct. Wow. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So um, we were blessed when he came into the RCIA program, and um, that was through God's grace and using him seeing uh, my journey and, and his openness to what I was sharing. Mm-hmm. And then through the grace of Our Lady, and of course I'm named after St. Bernadette, so apparitions played a big part mm-hmm. of my love and devotion to Our Lady. And then when I heard of recent ones in Medjugorje and was sharing with him some of that information, mm-hmm. um, that's exactly what the Lord used um, wow. to unite us in faith. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. Great. Okay, so Bernadette, I came across your uh, website rather serendipitously, and I was immediately taken in by all of the artwork and the, just the, I'll call it the profound theological thoughts connected with it all. And I mean, your whole website is literally a feast for the soul. And for our listeners, that website is prebornjesus.com. It's all one word, prebornjesus.com. So Bernadette, can you unfold your ministry for our listeners by walking us through that website? Well, of of course, I'd be glad to, and all glory and praise goes to our Lord, and He blessed me with a profound insight, and, and it occurred because I wanted to do something special for our Lord for Lent in 2009, and so I decided to make very seriously, although I had done it in the past, the St. Louis de Montfort consecration to Jesus through Mary for 33 days. And I used de Montfort's treatise, so it was pretty deep, and God used that time to take me a lot through the Incarnation, in fact, in thoughts and meditations and reflections. And through prayer, I totally did consecrate myself and allowed Our Lady to truly start to form me. So at the end of the consecration, it was March 25th, and I gave myself entirely to Our Lady to use me as she sees fit for to bring about uh, the reign of Jesus Christ. And so it just took place so quickly. Um, A week after Easter is Divine Mercy Sunday, and I was at a celebration in Pittsburgh for Divine Mercy Sunday. And whoever stated it, I still am not sure, but someone leading the conference or the rosary said, there should be a greater devotion to Jesus within the womb of Mary. Mm -hmm. And those words uh, just resonated with me, and that's what I took with me that day, um, through God's mercy as well. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting that you um, your consecration ended on March 25th, the, the Annunciation, so very providential. Right. Yes, and St. Louis de Montfort said it is the feast that all other feasts are yes, based on, right. truly the Incarnation, right. and so through his insights and so many other spiritual readers that I've delved into since then have really taken me on a journey. And so from there, it went to making rosaries for women that were considering abortion. So I did the pink and blue rosaries. But then our Lord took me deeper, and I felt him asking me to introduce these women to his mother. And I always say when I give talks, an artist I am not, and a theologian I certainly am not, and a scientist I am not. And that's simply because God put the thoughts and the teachings in my heart through the Holy Spirit and Our Lady, I'm sure, but He used others in the mystical body of Christ so beautifully to bring them into my life. Mm-hmm. And I would pray about who was to do, for instance, the image of, um, I was seeing an image of Him nestled um, in the womb of Mary, but through her garments so that we could see Him as a preborn child. Mm-hmm. And so um, He chose my son James, and James pencil sketched the image and gave it to me for my birth. Wow, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Wow. And immediately after he gave it to me, I was at adoration. And I when the Angelus bells rang, I started praying the Angelus. And the image that my son sketched came up in my mind's eye, but I saw the umbilical cord turn into the rosary. So he added that after I went home and told him it wasn't done and heaven had another inspiration. And so the pencil sketch was done, 
And then um, if you want me to continue, I can tell you how it unfolded into the watercolor. And if people want to, if they're able to go to the website, they can go under the About tab and they can see it starts with the pencil sketch and then it goes to the watercolor. Mm -hmm. that, oh, that's, this, yeah, that's great. And uh, you know what? I want to go back a second to that rosary that was kind of wrapped around the unborn Jesus, because I just find that just, it's beautiful and fascinating. And yes, and for our listeners, they can go to the website and see that. So can you just quickly explain to us how the rosary is analogous to the umbilical cord in protecting the physical and spiritual lives of the unborn, and really, too, how it serves as a lifeline in our own spiritual lives? Can you comment on that? I just, through prayer, received that in the darkness of abortion, the rosary is the beacon of light. And it was the Angelus Hour, so the, you know, the Angelus Hour, we know the joyful mysteries of the Rosary, the Annunciation starts with that. So especially with the ministry, when you're, you're um, praying the uh, joyful mysteries, um, there were several things that came, and I'll just share a few of those. But in the sad act of abortion, a child who's made in the image of God is killed. But praying the joyful mysteries of the rosary, the image of the Christ child, which actually represents all preborn babies, that's mm -hmm. cherished. Mm -hmm. And in abortion, there is a silent spring heard piercing heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. But when you pray the joyful mysteries of the rosary, it's the soothing lullaby, if I love you, is offered to Christ. And then in abortion, the abortion is severs the umbilical cord, breaking that physical bond between mother and child. But praying the joyful mysteries of the rosary, the fingers pass over each bead of the rosary, which is a spiritual umbilical cord of prayer linking together, you know, our love and that relationship. And um, then I prayed to Blessed Mother Teresa. At the time, it was Blessed Mother Teresa. She's now St. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa of Calcutta. Yeah. But it was on the feast of her death in September of '09, and I asked her, please help me to write some words that could accompany the rosary. And it's, it, they could, um, I'll just give you a few last beginning lines and the end lines for, um, Dear little child within the womb, I have great plans for you to bloom. There is a prayer to me so dear that Satan wants others not to hear. To end abortion, it is the key. The secret prayer is the rosary. And then I got unfolded how the rosary is like the roses, the beautiful roses. And it goes all the way through, explaining from the um, creed, the Our Father and the Hail Marys and the meditations on Jesus' life. And then I say, like a fully bloomed rose, so fragrant and sweet, the meditation on my life will soon be complete. As the rosary is finished and my life story told, a beautiful bouquet of spiritual roses I will behold. Your little child within the womb, I have great plans for you to bloom. In the darkness of abortion, the rosary is a beacon of light. My people are listening. We will win the fight. So, child, grow and bloom. Your life has been saved. Mercy is given. The rosary's been prayed. That's just, that is so beautiful, and uh, there's a lot to really contemplate on there. And, and for our listeners, again, you can go to the website, prebornjesus.com, and I know that there's a little video of Bernadette reciting this poem uh, for, for you, so you can get more on that. So thank you, Bernadette. And you know what, too? Um, the joyful mysteries, too, you, when you're saying all this, too, I'm thinking um, how pleasing it must be for, to our Lord and to Our Lady to make even reparation for the sins of abortion as well, too. So this is also a great... Um, act of reparation, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Okay, so... so that was through the artwork then. <laughs> yeah. That all came. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And I know you just, um, also on that website, I know you have a great devotion to Our Lady under the title, Ark of the New Covenant. And can you talk about a little bit about that and its con connectedness to the preborn Jesus? Surely. I was blessed to meet Leah Ravadi. i now a dear friend that helps with the ministry from our Pittsburgh area. And when I was introduced to her, um, she agreed to do a full-length picture of James's um, picture that was from the waist up of Our Lady, but a full-length watercolor. And the title of it is Festival of the Preborn Jesus. And we use that for pro-life work. And when it was completed, it really started to spread and was used um, with man many pro-life settings and gifted to many um, priests, bishops, even our Holy Father. But from the watercolor then, in, it was in 
20, it was around 2011, 2012, I was, I was reading Scott Hahn's book, Hail Holy Queen. Mm. Um, it's an awesome book. It I is. It's, I've read I, it too. Great book. <laughs> he does such a wonderful job with typology. He does, yes. Sometimes <laughs> people say, well, Mary's not in the Bible. Yes. And with this typology where we, we do exactly what St. Augustine says, to, uh-huh. you know, we, we look at it in the eyes of fulfilling the New Testament's fulfilled, or the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New, mm-hmm. and so Scott Hahn did an awesome job with Hail Holy Queen, where he does explain that Mary's the Ark of the New Covenant through Scripture, and I'm looking at the image of Vessel of the Preborn Jesus. Well, there she is, she is the Ark with, there she with is. Jesus mm-hmm. in her womb, because mm-hmm. um, the Ark contained, for those of you listening that um, may not be familiar, the Ark that the Israelites carried contained um, the Ten Commandments of on stone, but Our Lady contained the Word of God made flesh. So how much holier she is. And the Ark also contained a little urn that they had the relics of the manna they were fed in the desert, and she contains the true bread of life. Mm-hmm. And the, the Ark also contained a priestly rod of Aaron, but she contained, oh, as Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, pregnant with preborn Jesus, the priestly king himself, the ark was overshadowed, of course, and that's how they were taken to the promised land, a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of a cloud by night. And Our Lady, of course, was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and we know that is the moment the Incarnation took place. Mm-hmm. So she is the new Ark of the Covenant, and slowly God was showing my heart how she has to be a statue made, and that she should stand on top of the Ark of the Covenant, because in Revelation, we see that um, heaven unfolds, and we see the Ark of the Covenant in this temple, and it goes right into 12.1, Revelation 12.1, where you know we're familiar with um, uh, the woman clothed with the sun, with mm-hmm. the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars, so especially today in these battles we're facing, um, she needs to be out front as the Ark, leading her children, fighting for her children, and we've used her for Jericho marches and so much pro-life work as Our Lady, Ark of the New Covenant. Yeah, I, I, and that's beautiful, and that was going to be my next question, too. That Have you taken this statue to abortion facilities to pray, and do you have any stories to share while well, maybe she has touched lives? Well, it's interesting because I, I feel like I do my best and God does the rest. And whenever you're there at the abortion facility, it's such a, um, I don't even know what the word is, it's so intense with what's going on, you know, through prayer and through the exchanges. And I've not had someone come up to me um, personally and say, oh, that image, you know, the others that um, have gone um, to the other side now that were advocates for abortion, they have. But the people that are going into the clinics, into Planned Parenthood, I've not had them say anything, although I've given them rosary and healing cards. We do have Name Your Precious Child healing cards. So I think seeds are planted, and God is using it. And um, we, I've had, I mean, she travels with us to conferences and all. She's three foot, the traveling statue. The original hand carved was two and a half feet, but the replica statue is three foot, and we take her on airplanes, and oftentimes, you know, we're evangelizing the whole time. She's there and explaining her role um, in salvation history as the Ark, and so people are brought to tears, but it's not always in front of Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. God's using it everywhere. What, that's, that's, yeah, that's wonderful. And again, for our listeners, you can go to the website and you can see um, just this beautiful statue that Bernadette has been talking about. And, and is that for sale, Bernadette? Do you have those for sale? Yes, the statue is so small. So on peopleandjesus.com, um, there's a toolbar at the top and we have a shop tab and you can drop down to the statue sales. And we actually have the 36 inch that I told you about. And then we have 16 inch replicas as well. So we have those both available. We also have items on our Etsy account for sale from our prints that are used for pro life to the healing cards I mentioned. We're going to soon have just for our iPhones, we're always using those, a new cover and it'll have um, Leia's image of Vessel of the Preborn Jesus on those. We even have chasmal replicas that priests are ordering or parishioners are ordering for their priests because Mary's becoming embraced under this title for these times. And so there's actual 
investments that can be made for the priest. And really, it was a priestly tribe of Aaron that carried the ark. And so I really believe in these times Mm -hmm. the priests are embracing her. They've even carried her, you know, Mm -hmm. um, just across the family land, and there were priests that processed her. I mean, it's really an amazing time, and she is out front leading this battle. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I agree. A hundred percent. That's just beautiful. Yeah. And I, and those vestments that, uh, the vesica that, that, are, that are on there, it's just exquisite. And again, I just encourage listeners to go to that website, prebornjesus.com. If you're just joining us, we are speaking with Bernadette Conklin about her preborn Jesus ministry. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of things, um, Bernadette. So let's go now and let's, um, mentioned, and you did a little bit earlier about St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And um, from what I understand, she's the patron saint of your ministry. Why did you choose her, or did she choose you? (laughs) I think whenever there's a devotion to a saint or a blessed or servant of God or a special connection with someone that's passed, I think they ask you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I felt her tapping me on the shoulder. Yeah, so I I have such respect for the work she did and her boldness. You know, we can be humble and we can be dignified in our humility, but with boldness. And that mm-hmm. she's she's really who I try to emulate. Of course, Our Lady too, but mm-hmm. um, plus the Mother Teresa as well. And I was I wasn't able to go to her canonization, but Steve Ray, who a lot of uh, the listeners know because he takes so many of pilgrimages to the Holy Land and. Mm-hmm. In fact, Steve has our statue and has spoken about it. Steve was at the canonization, so he he sent me a, one of from the medals. Oh <laughs> the wow! Oh, so, what a gift! Good. Yeah, and uh, so I, you know, I think in Edison and the theologian, I'm like, gosh, you can read Mother <laughs> Saint Teresa of Calcutta's readings about life, and it's just feeds the soul. Yes, so, yes, and, it does. Um, lastly, if we have time, I'll go into a. Um, not, but that's a huge part of the ministry of late. And that's with the fetal microchimerism that's been unfolded. And yeah, yeah. Tell us quickly about that. What Can you just explain what is fetal? And let me see if I can get this. If that's a mouthful. Fetal microchimerism. What is that? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know about it until I read Father Donald Calloway's book, Under the Mantle. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the last chapter I'm reading, you know, especially those of us that have ever conceived and carried a child in the womb. Some of us have miscarried, you know, some have aborted, um, but we're all children of a mother. So fetal microchimerism is a phenomenon that occurs when the stem cells from the baby in a mother's womb cross the placenta and they take up residence in in the mother, and decades of research have proven that some of the cells from every child a woman ever carries in, in her womb remain in that mother's body for life. Just incredible. And so if they want to read about this, if you go to the prebornjesus.com website, and then you go under our Preborn Jesus News, mm-hmm. in 2017, in August of 2017, I wrote an article it's astounding research unveils the mother child bond and it ties in about fetal microchimerism and those living cells in us. But then I take it a step further and say, what of the living sacred cells of Jesus and Mary? Mm-hmm. And she truly is the Ark of the New Covenant. And when she shows up, no wonder she's the terrible human. Yeah. Really hold her because she is carrying Jesus' sacred cells. And, of course, she had to be assumed into heaven. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. And that ties in so nicely. That's great. Well, Bernadette, it has been an absolute joy talking with you today about this inspired ministry. Thank you for being a docile instrument in the hands of Our Lady and her preborn son. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to do it. And I hope to do some special um, Facebook uh, videos and, and for Advent. So stay tuned, and you can check that out and, li- out and like us on Facebook as well. 
Thank you. Oh, great, great, great information. And I think it was St. Thomas Aquinas who said that the greatest and most noble act that any human being can do is to think upon and contemplate Almighty God. And I think that if we simply love, adore, and contemplate Jesus in the womb of Mary, thanking him for taking on our human vesture and thanking Our Lady for her yes, that will go a long way in helping to end abortion. So we thank you, Bernadette, for your ministry and the beautiful work that God is doing through you in helping to build up a much-needed culture of life and love. For our action item this week, we'd like to ask you to pray the first joyful mystery of the Holy Rosary for Bernadette and her ministry, and for the intention that our own devotion and love for the hidden unborn Jesus will grow during this holy season of Advent. Also, be sure to check out her website at prebornjesus.com and like her on Facebook. Bernadette will be posting a series of Advent reflections, as she just said, with the artwork at facebook.com forward slash preborn Jesus ministry. So be sure to check all that out as well. Well, we're out of time for today. Thank you for joining us here on Pro-Life to the Max. May your Advent be a time of great blessing and spiritual growth. And we hope that today's program has gotten you off to a great start. Until next time, let us heed the warning of St. Maximilian Mary Colby that the most deadly poison of our time is indifference. Let's pray for one another that we may be consumed with the desire to save lives and souls, to give the greatest possible honor and glory to God. Ave Maria. 